Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com, and I'm here with Martin at the Adelwood World Headquarters and Main Production Facility. Martin, thank you so much for having us here. You guys have a beautiful facility. Thanks. Great having you here. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your position and what you do here? Sure. Um, I'm the head of the uh, rock development department here at Adelwood. So I'm basically taking care of the new development of rope, um, but also as we have the production facilities over here, um, we are pretty familiar with uh, producing the ropes as well. Yeah? Excellent, excellent. Show us what we have here and, and tell us what we're looking at. So basically we have the raw material for the sheath and this is for dynamic ropes, it's all polyamide 6. And the polyamide 6 is a multi-filament yarn. So if you look at the yarn very closely, you can see that it's made out of very, very uh, much fine filaments. This is uh, roughly around 140 filaments within this yarn and this is the basis of the material. What you can see as well is that the color is already added. This is uh, done within the spinning process so the color is within every single filament and this is the raw material we are using to create our ropes. And because you buy solution dyed material from your manufacturer there's no chance of the color wearing off or of seeing white spots beneath the beneath the braids or anything like that. No, um, the color is uh, within the filament as mentioned, um, so this is going to stay within your rope as long as you use your rope. So this material is going to move this way through the factory, True. and what is the next step? So the next step is uh, going to be the twisting step. Um, if we walk over here, I can show it to you. Great. All right, so Martin, walk us through what happens to the raw filaments and how the twisting step works. Yeah. So first of all, we have the, the step of twisting the material over here. And we're doing this uh, for two reasons. First of all, we want to make the material thicker for the sheath material. And second, in the second case, we, had the, uh, we were just showing the filaments of the yarn. Actually, if you just use the material like this, the breaking of the filament would be very easy. So the rope gets rather quickly worn off. And so we're trying to get that into a structure where the filament is within the structure. And this is why we're doing the twisting over here. So basically we're using the material three times, four times, five times, depending on the rope we want to create. If we're talking about arborism ropes, for example, material can be way thicker. So the thickest construction is like twisting the material 30 times with itself. And so yeah, that's done over here. When you say twisting, you're talking about just simply twisting it this way, not combining it with another piece. No, we're talking about adding it three times the raw material and then twisting it with itself, Around so itself. three times the material. Very cool, and all that's happening almost imperceptibly. These machines are moving so quickly, it's hard to even tell that they're moving. Yeah, they are, so um, we just have around 80 machines running down there, 80 machines with roughly around 40 carriers per, per machine. So there's a lot of material you have to set up to get the machinery running. So on one bobbin over here for a production run, we have roughly around 33,000 meters of material. And so this is why we, we have to run with a decent speed to get the material for all the ropes we're producing. That's incredible. Thank you so much for showing us how the filaments are turned into a single twist. What's the next step in the process? The next step, and for the, especially for dynamic ropes, one of the most important steps will be the shrinking of the material, and uh, we do that over there. Martin, that was really uh, great. Uh, we're going to look at the shrinking process in a separate video.